Today we are starting with this old palette that has been in my garage for a long time. I'm going to pull it out as best as I can. Our garage is a hot mess. Please excuse the mess. I'm going to bring it out to the driveway and then we're going to take my jigsaw and I'm just going to start breaking apart some of the boards. Actually, most of the boards. And then I'm going to take four of them and just place them vertically. I'm going to try to put them together and then I'm going to take another board and I'm going to mark where I need to make a cut. And I'm going to use my miter saw to make the cut and then I'm going to take that board and cut into two. I want these boards to have a very distressed look, almost like they've been painted before and it's kind of chipped and distressed through the years. So I wanted to have that weather look. I'm going to scrape on paint. I know that it's a unique technique, but I have used it several times. And what you want to do is you want to use a scraper. You want to dab your scraper into the paint, just like you see here. And you just want to start scraping it on. So basically you're just applying and scraping at the same time. This is going to give it that look like it's been weathered and the paint has just chipped off. Once I was completely dry, I'm going to take those two boards and just put one on the top and one on the bottom to create a barn door look. I'm going to use an old knob from an old dresser that I flipped a while ago and I'm going to use it as a handle for my what will be like an old barn door. I'm going to go inside now and I'm just going to make a very quick wreath form. These are some magnolia leaves that I had on hand and this wreath form is from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to start hot gluing the leaves going into one direction and doing it all around. Then I'm going to take smaller ones and I'm just going to start hot gluing them in between those larger ones. This is just going to add a little bit more fullness and just a little bit of character. And then I thought I just want to add a little bit of color but not too much. So I'm going to add these tiny little flowers right in between here and there. I'm just going to push them right into the wreath form and then we are going to attach the wreath onto the door. Just place a screw and then place it on top. Oh my goodness. This door is stunning. It is large, it is heavy, it is rustic, it is looking so authentic. Love that we use the palette. For this next DIY craft, I'm going to take another piece of that palette board and I removed any nails that it had and I do want to sand it down just a little bit to smooth out some of the roughness. Of course, I want to keep the rustic look, but then I'm going to take one of these or several of these glass vials. I got these a while back and then these clamps, I get these clamps at the hardware store, sometimes at on Amazon or even Walmart. These are one inch ones and I'm going to place the first one right in the center, very carefully tightening those screws, making sure that it's going to fit snug, but not break the glass because these are real glass, but I don't want them to fall either. So I'm going to place one again right in the center and then one on each side of it making sure that they are evenly spaced as well as at about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And then I'm just going to add some cute little white flowers on it. But of course, you can add any flowers for any season. This is one of my favorites today. It is absolutely stunning. I added a couple of sawtooth hooks to the back to make sure that it could be hung. Look how gorgeous it is for every season. Wow. For this next DIY craft, I'm going to take another piece of that palette board. This one is cut to about 18 inches long. I am going to start marking where I want to drill a few holes because we're creating a floating shelf that has a very rustic look. So I'm going to grab a drill bit. I'm just going to start drilling holes one in each corner, making sure they're about evenly spaced and apart from each other. I'll do the same thing on the other side, making sure I'm very careful if there are any remaining nails. Now I tried to remove any nails that were really sticking out, but also just making sure that they were flush if they were just cut. But I do want to keep that nice, authentic, rustic look. I'm going to take some jute rope and I'm going to just thread it. Of course, we're making a hanging shelf, so I want to have four of these. I want two of them to be joined together at the top, kind of like looped, and then the other two looped as well. And then I'm just going to tie them in knots underneath the shelf. This is going to allow it for it not to go down. I'm going to do the same thing with the other jute rope, and then we're going to tie them in the top. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And I have those links always down below in the, the description box. So make sure you check them out when you are done watching. And we're just about done. I'm just going to cut off the excess rope from the bottom. And I'm going to add these tiny little white vases. I thought the contrast between the rustic board and the white was gorgeous. I added some cute little white flowers. 
I love this board. These palette boards are just priceless. So good for DIY crafts. For the next DIY craft, I'm going to take another piece of the palette board and I'm going to cut two pieces that are equal in length. I'm going to really cut these nails. They're sticking out a little bit. I'm being very careful. I just want to make sure that I'm cutting them as flush as possible, but I want to keep that nice rustic look. So I'm going to do my best. Once I have them in nice flush look, I am going to um, sand them down just a little bit. Again, I just don't want splinters, but I do want to keep the roughness. So now they're nice and prepped. I'm just going to join them together. I'm going to use some paint sticks. I cut them to size and I'm going to use wood glue as well as my brad nailer to attach them. All right, so I'm going to take one of these picture frames from Dollar Tree. They are cardstock, and they're great for crafts like these. I'm going to add one of my and my husband's wedding photos to it with some tape, and then I'm going to place it right in the center of the boards. I'm going to use these thumb tags. These are upholstery tags, actually. I'm going to pre-drill a hole in each corner and just place one tag in each corner, hammering in them down. And then I am going to add a sawtooth hook to the back to make sure that it's going to be able to be hung and i gotta tell you this one is stunning of course so easy to change if you needed to but look how gorgeous this looks the contrast of the board the rusticness with the white frame absolutely stunning For the next DIY craft, I'm going to take three additional boards. I'm going to remove, again, just clean it off, remove nails, hammering them down. I am going to sand them down smooth once again using my palm sander just to remove any excess roughness. But again, looking for that rustic look. Once I had them nicely smooth and prepped, I am going to then attach them together. I did dust them to make sure that they're dust free. And this time we're going to make a nice, beautiful, inspirational sign. So I'm going to attach them once again with some paint sticks. We're going to use our combination with wood glue as well as the brand nails for a nice, secure hold. The wood glue is really going to make sure that it's sealed. And then the brand nail is just such an easy way to attach the boards. But you can also use a hammer if you'd like. But stay tuned because I have some information for you about an online course that I just recently created. All right, so once they are attached, I did create a decal using my Cricut. Now, this one took me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. The boards are so rough. And so I really had to take my time making sure that I was attaching them. If they weren't attaching, I just had to be very patient. And then, of course, I have these slits in between. So I had to make any slits and cuts as needed. So if you do something like this, just take your time. Make sure that everything's attached nicely. Enjoy the process. Friends, I would love for you to join my email list. I send out one email just once a week and it's with current uploads as well as any new news with my business and channel. So if you want to join it, it is linked down below in the description box. So make sure you check it out. All right, so we're just about done. I'm just going to keep attaching the graphic, again, taking my time. But I want to show you how absolutely stunning this looks. So rustic, so fresh. It will look great in a vacation home or even your current decor. I love it. Okay, my friends. So you know that I love crafting. And you know that I love crafting with power tools. And I have a huge announcement for you. I would love for you to join my crafting with power tools online course. If you are a new beginner crafter, if you want to take your crafting skills to a whole new level, if you want to use power tools, but you want to gain a little bit more confidence, 
if you want to save time and make more money, and if you just want to create high quality items, this is the course for you. I'll show you my favorite tools, the importance of safety, the benefits. I'll give you visual examples and breakdowns, and you can watch a start to finish project with every power tool discussed in the course. By the end of the course, you'll have a solid understanding of the basic power tools that are essential for crafting home decor. You also gain confidence to tackle a whole wide range of DIY crafts. So what you want to do is you want to check out the description box. There's a link down there that says join online course. You also want to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. You also want to follow me on my other social media platforms and get crafting. So I hope you join me. Check it out. It is linked below. And this is it for today. Let me know which one is your favorite. And I have another video here for you to watch. Click on it. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.